Escape from Tarkov Arena is in trouble. The spin-off competitive shooter from Escape from Tarkov was a game I was super hyped about. Still have great hopes for. And as of right now, don't really enjoy playing all that much. And while there are for sure people that are enjoying Arena, and that is that is a good thing, a large portion of the player base has already stopped playing it just a week after the wipe. Now, when I got my first crack at Arena in Las Vegas during TwitchCon, I couldn't get enough of it. I spent hours at the convention hall playing it, talking with the devs, and just absorbing everything about it I could. Now, in my grind to get to the tier two playlist, I got so frustrated with the game, my wife actually had to come upstairs and shut my PC off and make me take a break. She hasn't had to do anything like that since my controller breaking rage days of Gears of War. So what brought about this change in perspective for me in the game? A lot actually. And this video is going to cover everything arena involved with the, the last major patch and wipe. Bad. gonna cover it ugly definitely gonna talk about it <laughs> he's outside he shot me through the fucking wall because i glitched through but even the good stuff is there and we will address that too or at least the changes they have made going in the right direction now two things to this i have played every single match of arena this wipe solo i haven't queued with a squad or played any kind of pre-arranged team I did this for two reasons. One, playing in an organized group makes it significantly easier. You have such an advantage. Not just because you have better comms, it's because you actually have comms, which is rare in solo queue. Maybe one in five games, I could get more than one person to talk to me. It's also way more fun. And not just because you're winning more, but because you're just playing with your buddies and it's just more entertaining and engaging. It also keeps you from running into trolls and griefers on your team, which just makes for a better experience for everybody. I wanted the rawest and worst experience I could have, so I didn't try to butter up any issues or not experience some of the flaws because I was running in a team. Right now as of filming this, I'm right at 80 matches. And this let me experience almost every tier one kit, at least the ones that I unlocked, I obviously don't have them all unlocked, as well as a couple of the tier twos uh, that I had unlocked and actually gotten to. Now this happens because in order to unlock tier two matchmaking, which happens when you come in here, say I can do tier one or tier two, you have to have five tier two presets unlocked. Then the tier two unlocks for you. Now the fastest way to do this is simply go to Q uh, CQB. You come down this left tree with the Raider, Bustleman, Diesel, Blackjack, and then you do all three of these kits, Centurion, Brahmin, Lima, uh, Lima and then pick either Ox or Yes or whatever you want to do. It's just shy of 270,000 experience. Now, I didn't do this. I did it a little bit longer. I did one of each tree. Basically, I went down this tree uh, and then CQB, you saw Scout, I went down one. Marksman, I did two. Obviously, I like to snipe, so I wanted to see what these two different trees were like, and that made it take longer for me to do. It was up about 390K XP to do it this way. This took me a little over 60 matches, but if you're playing with a decent squad and you can win about half of your matches or more, you'll average probably eight to nine KXP and you can get there in, let's say 35 to 40 matches, you can get to tier two. That's also assuming BSG doesn't change any of this in the future and the tier two system gets modified once more people get into the queue. Because of the way they made it sound, this was done so that people didn't have 40 minute matchmaking in tier two. There is one huge issue with this system right now and BSG has said it's a bug and they are planning on fixing it, but it's still there. When you unlock a kit, any excess XP you earned in that very specific match vanishes. So right here, for example, I was just over 34K XP and only needed 35K. My next match, I got like seven or eight K XP. Only like 400 XP went to leveling up. The rest, the other 7K just vanished. So because of this, I actually had to earn over 450,000 experience due to this lost XP just to hit that 390K XP mark. So hopefully this gets fixed soon because this will speed up getting to tier two that much faster. And since we're talking about matchmaking, let's break down how it works and talk about its ups and downs. The simple side of it is you pick your tier when you go into ranked. So you can pick tier one or tier two. You pick your game mode or both if you want. And then when you match make, it match makes you based on this tier as well as your ARP. Right now, tier one matchmaking sucks. It just is terrible. Boring. Matches aren't even. It's usually a stomp or a get stomped kind of gig. You know, you go 0 and 5 or the other team, or you go 5 and 0. But I don't think this is an inherent issue with the matchmaking itself, at least not right now. The biggest cause to this problem that I see is everyone is on the same playing field, regardless of skill. If you're a 40 hour a week gamer, 
or a four hour a week gamer, you're all queuing together because the system is just starting out. And it'll probably take a while for this to filter out a little bit even and get people separated based on where they're actually skilled at. Now this really changed once I got into tier two matchmaking. This just separates, let's say the more casual players out from the more hardcore players, which generally means they're better. So that made the skill, the skill balancing much better. Matches would go four or five or three to five most of the time. And the rare five to one, almost all of the matches came down to the last two players 1v1 at the end of the round. So they weren't really lopsided. I do believe the current tier system has flaws in it though, spe specifically talking about matchmaking. While these kits are all, all pretty well balanced in their tier ones and tier two so far, I haven't played a ton of higher kits versus lower kits because people just don't have them yet, but the tier two and tier one kits in their respective feel okay balanced, but there are still some decent gaps in tier one between top and bottom. Just for example, the, the top tier one kits, we'll go look at the Ratnik, has PS ammo. This is a, a 28 pin ammo. While if you go look, and it's, it's hard to look at some of these armors just because how the system works, but these guys don't have uh, very good armors or they don't have armors at all. So you're talking about at best broken class threes, um, but usually class two armor that you're fighting against. So the armor is essentially pointless. Whereas the bottom tier kits are usually shooting, you know, 20 pin ammo or even, even less. So while they are pretty well balanced, there still are decent gaps between the tops and the bottoms of tier one. And I suspect even tier three will see it as well once I get, or tier two and tier three once I get into those, if I do. And this matters because if you're picking tier one and like, let's say you decide to start over and you've never done marksman and you come play in a tier one kit, you're gonna be running around with uh, this 27 pen bolt action ammo and you're potentially fighting people with class three or even class four armor in the uh the bottom of the or the, should i say the, the level the third level of the tier one kits now i see two ways to address this the first is just to continue to balance the kits further but that's just boring it'll make leveling up seem even that much more pointless because there is no change if you're going from one kit that's close to the other and the power jumps are what makes progression fun Going from the Marksman class, for example, finally getting this class where I was able to shoot M80, this was night and day, especially with a decent optic. This kit is a lot of fun. Whereas even the SKS kit, this is brutal because you don't have mags and it takes forever to reload. The three X's on these just suck. You know, it's a huge power jump from here to there. And that is a good thing. So if you're not gonna balance them, the only other thing I can see you do is split this up into even more tiers. Instead of three full tiers for 10 lines, essentially, do this in maybe four or five rows. So maybe tier one is two, tier two is three sets of kits, tier three, then you have tier three, that's another two, and then two, and then two. And you kind of get what I'm trying to say. You get a squishing of the tiers so that when you're matchmaking, you're not facing, you don't have so many disparate kits to balance against each other. You only have two rows and that way there's a little bit of progression. It's not huge. It's not gonna give you a huge advantage. And by the time you do get that next power jump, you go into the next tier. But doing this probably will take a bunch more balancing. So it, there's a bunch of work there as well. Because simply put, you can't just break this into tier one here and then tier two is these two rows of kits. You cannot stack a guy like this with good armor face shield against one of these scout kits at tier two where you're shooting you know pstgzh uh pp19 with 20 round mags it just isn't going to work and we saw this very problem last wipe with arena where you would be fighting you know you'd have a tier a level one a row one kit or a row two kit and you'd be fighting people at five and six simply because it was matched on arp and that was it one other problem with this huge gap in tiers three levels is it takes forever to get through them, which makes the progression system feel so much more grindy and less fun. Having this broken down into more tiers for the average player is a big deal. Right now to get to tier two, I figure 50 or 60 matches for your average player, maybe down into the, the mid forties for a really good player that's playing with friends. That's a very long time for average players. Too long. Now, there is another thing here that could sidestep all of these problems, and it's to add a non-ranked mode. Right now, I do not understand why BSG is not added unranked. Maybe it's because they're worried the playlist will get too diluted and they want a bunch of information for ranked and how to deal with the ranking structure. I'm not sure. But an unranked mode would almost 
alleviate it might it won't fix but it'll alleviate a lot of issues almost overnight life would be so much better if you could go into an unranked mode not be forced to play with people that are hyper competitive in a playlist that is designed to be competitive because people are trying to climb the ranks even if you are a casual or you just want to screw around you have no choice but to play ranked right now and it's a recipe for a lot of bad outcomes. A non-ranked mode will allow you to level up your kits outside of having to risk your ARP or KD or whatever stat each individual cares about. It also gives people a place to play solo until their friends get on. I know lots of folks that won't touch arena unless they have two or three of their friends on because the solo experience is so bad right now. So they just choose not to play arena and play something else till everybody can get on. A non-ranked playlist will keep players like that around and playing the game. And with this, easy things you could do is just turn down the, no the, the XP you earn in non-ranked versus ranked, or provide an XP bonus in ranked. That way there is still some sort of incentive to play ranked over uh, unranked in regards to the progression system. With all of this said, this next iteration of the matchmaking and progression system is heads and tails way better than what we had back in December. Sure, it still has plenty of room for improvement, but I do think the changes with matchmaking and progression were all really good changes in the right direction. Now they've already started to make changes that adamantly should have been made from the beginning, but at least we have them. A big one of my gripes is that in ranked, when you win or lose, it's just plus or minus 25 points, unless you get a really extreme difference. It didn't matter if you were playing somebody two or 300 points above or below you, it was still plus 25 or negative 25. Now, as of the fourth, they finally modified the system to take into account differences in ARP. So that if you manage to beat a team that is ranked way higher than you, you should get more reward. And on the flip side, if you lose to a team that, that's way higher than you, you don't lose that much ARP. Now, based on the patch notes that, you know, it says they increase the change of ARP reward and loss after a match, depending on the difference between the player's ARP and the average ARP of the opponent's team. So this is, it looks like it's gonna be done on an individual basis. So your ARP versus the average of the team, not your team's average, which I think is a really interesting way to do it. And uh, I think this is good, but I could be wrong. There's definitely ways to abuse that, I think, but we'll just have to see how it plays out. And they just talk, the greater the difference, the more the player with a lower average ARP will receive in case of victory, blah, 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 blah. And then the last note here, it's important, increased matchmaking range for players with high ARP. All players at ARP above 3000 will be matched together. So 3000, 4000, 5000, I don't know if there's anybody that high those people will all be matched together regardless. And I think that's fine because that helps with matchmaking times and people at that level are probably gonna be playing with each other just fine anyways. And again, I don't know why this wasn't the case right out the gate, because even if it's not like you needed a special system at the start because everybody's close to each other anyways. So it's gonna give that plus 25, minus 25 until you start to see a separation. But here we are, we have it now. Now I haven't played a match yet where I've gotten anything but plus 25 or negative 25. So that's either a statement of the range is still too big, or I'm being matched really well now with people close to my ARP. And this is a great way to offset the sting of the occasional bad matched up teams you get, where you just get completely outclassed on who you're matched up against. And it really, I think, will discourage people from including lower ranked players in their teams to try and get easier matches. Because if you have a high ARP and you're being matched against a low average ARP team, you're just not gonna get that much out of it. Your low level guy might, but the rest of the team isn't going to. Now, next up in my critique here is just the overall mechanics and systems of Arena All In. For me, Arena can be a lot of fun and I can just drop right into a match, play some stuff, be competitive, but that's because I have near 10,000 hours in Tarkov. Tarkov has very complex systems, but they are second nature to me. I understand how they all work. And a lot of the stuff is muscle memory and there's not anything I need to think about. I don't have to sit there and process which med I need to use for which injury. If I can ignore a bleed or if I need to fix it right away, should I save my pain pills or should I use them now? What should I loot if I kill somebody? Does 35 pin ammo matter? Where does my plate actually cover? What do the 12 hits on the kill screen mean? Hide over bore and on and on. I love Tarkov for these complex systems. It's one of the things that not just drew me in, but has kept me playing the game for years. But these systems, honestly, I think are a liability to the enjoyment of Arena, especially for new players. I have watched brand new players play Arena. Now with uh, people that are obviously using trial codes, but also people at uh, TwitchCon. I'm talking folks that didn't even know what Tarkov was, but they're trying this out for the first time and it's brutal. They bleed out from a heavy bleed and have no idea why. They take damage from running on a broken limb and think they just got shot. All funny in the moment, but it, it's just an exclamation point to how complex and hard 
the systems in Tarkov are. I'm all on board for BSD's idea of a hardcore arena shooter, but going one for one with Tarkov's mechanics is just not working, and it gatekeeps the game from a huge swath of players. There is a seemingly unsolvable problem right here though. How do you start peeling out some of these systems? They are all so intertwined and dependent on each other, you can't just remove one or the other without having drastic impacts on everything else. You can't get rid of the complex ballistic system without completely changing how armor works how weapons are balanced, or as well as how the health system functions. And you can't change the health system function without overhauling how the character health pools and the damage stats all work. And if you just go all in and strip out all of these systems, you just end up with another clone of dozens of other games out there, which it's very, very clear BSG is adamant about not going that way. Now, an important point to this discussion, though, is the reality of what happens in each fight. For most fights, you can ignore many of these mechanics. It doesn't matter that much if you have 40 out of 50 armor plates versus 50 out of 50 armor plates, or that you're using 33 pen ammo versus 36 pen ammo. Most matches, you can completely ignore a light bleed. And heavy bleeds only really matter if you survive the fight and have time to worry about healing without being pushed by another player for a trade. These little factors mostly only come into play on the fringes, but the perception of them is overwhelming and it makes new players think about stuff other than shooting and having fun at the game. Just for a simple example here, the assault starter kits have six different meta items to worry about. That means a new player has to understand what the difference between the bandage, the S-march, the, the pain pills, the IFAC, the splint, what do those all do? Why do they matter? What am I doing with these things? What is the injury that I use them on matter with? That's all stuff outside of the arena shooter that is fun. So I don't see a good solution for this as of yet outside of some crazy tutorial system or a way to walk players into this system inside of arena. Now, moving on to the last segment here, um, this is gonna be my gripe list, if you will. The, the big problems that Tarkov has that need to be fixed sooner than later, or the game will not survive. But we don't have a sponsor on this video or anything like that. I wanna take a second, one, to ask for a like and subscribe. I have to imagine if you're here, you like the content, you're interested in it at least. So do me a favor, throw me a like down below, maybe a comment, um, but also I wanna plug my music. Some people get hung up on me saying my music. I'm an owner of the music. In order for me to give permission like I do, it's my music. It's made in conjunction with Lawyer Records. I don't make it. They make it for me and for everybody else. So it does support us. We, we don't charge for it. It's free to listen to. We monetize through the stuff on Spotify or Apple Music or whatever, but it's free for the overall community of content creators as well. That means you can use it in your videos. You can use it on your streams and you don't have to worry about muting your second track or DMC takedowns or copyright strikes. We made it with the full purpose of everybody able to be used it. And all we ask for is you attribute us so people know where to find it if they like it. We're like 170, 180 songs now, uh, and we've got a new album on the way that should be here pretty soon. So head down to the link, check it out. Let me know what you think, if you like it or not, and give me a follow over there on Spotify because that does help out as well. But back to the nitty gritty here at Tarkov. The biggest one, and everybody knows this, is desync. And this is where you have a difference between what the player sees, what we see on our screens, and what is happening on the server, and usually what the other players are seeing. You could have three different things going on there all at the same time. And for whatever reason, Arena has gotten worse. I don't know what it is. I, I don't know how it's possible, but Arena feels worse now than it did two months ago. And it feels worse than even regular Tarkov does. And it's to the point that a lot of the more, let's say, I, I wanna say better players, they are more skilled, but players that have a lot more time are learning where they can abuse this advantage. It's, it's, it's an extreme peaker's advantage to the point where you can get shot by somebody on your screen and you don't even see them. And then you throw into things like where you'll shoot somebody and you see red dots on their head, uh, blood splatter, but that shot never gets counted. And it's not like a desync thing. They just, they die or you die and then no shots are counted. Then there's things like lag with the cleanup crew and dozens of other performance issues that completely ruin the experience of arena. When you see on your screen that you shoot someone in the head and that shot never counts, that takes away everything else. The rest of the game could be fixed and perfect and smooth. If that's happening, it doesn't matter. And this needs to be on the top of BSG's list to address and fix. And it might be, but unfortunately for me anyways, the game feels like it's stepped backwards. And I know this is inconsistent. I know some people are not having issues like I am, but I know a lot of people are. On top of this, the game just doesn't feel smooth as Tarkov right now either. It's janky or clunky, something along those lines. I'm not quite sure what the best word for it is. It's very hard to explain, but I find myself getting hung up on corners and items, glitching out my ADS, even if 
it was on par with Tarkov, it wouldn't be good enough. Tarkov has a ton of other things going on for it. Looting, tasks, gear, extractions, and so on. Those things help fill the voids left by the incomplete and cumbersome mechanics of Tarkov. Arena has none of those. All it has is mechanics. And if that doesn't feel good, then there's nothing else left of the game. Now, I'm pretty sure I'm pe I was preaching to the choir with some of that stuff, so I'm not going to beat a dead horse. Just wanted to get it out there that I've been experiencing it. But I do have a list of some quality of life things that I think that aside from the stuff that's broken that obviously needs to be fixed, it's just gonna make the experience overall better for players. First up is death comms. Once we're dead, we should be able to talk to our teammates, at least the dead ones, but even the alive ones. Prearranged teams almost always use Discord. And the advantage that provides over solo players is absurd. You can just straight tell somebody where you died because you can see the kill cam and where they're at. It is impossible for BSG to limit people using Discord, so they just need to allow all of us to talk to each other throughout a match. That's my opinion. I know there are good arguments against it, but they don't match up to the arguments for it, in my opinion, especially on a competitive game. The next one is the special collection kit. I don't know why BSG hasn't done anything with this because there's so much potential here, but it's getting the opposite of love. Rizzi, for example, is pretty much just a meme kit. It's not even its not even something you even want to play. The ammo's bad, the gun's bad, the kit's bad. They even give you a stim that it doesn't say anything here, but it will kill you sometimes when you take it. Like you just fall over dead in the spawn and everybody goes, oh, okay, well, that guy had a Rizzi kit. And it wouldn't take all that much to add more of these and put more spice into the system. And maybe they've had them done and they're just waiting for marketing reasons, I don't know. But it is disappointing that we're not seeing this side of it yet. Now, right now, the, the primary problem with this is, is the Rigi kit is a considered a scout kit. You can tell by this little emblem here. So it's just gonna go to the scout kit of whatever you're unlocking there. And you can't send that XP anywhere else. So you can't play Rigi and send it to Marksman or Scout or CQB or Assault. So there needs to be more kits here that you can play so that you can actually use these, you know, these collection kits and they mean something outside of just being a meme. Because to be honest with you, the 10% boost in money you get is meaningless, it's pointless. I'm rolling right at about 50%, I think. I should be exactly 50% actually. Yeah, I'm 50% win rate and I'm up to almost 3.9 million rubles. What does it matter if I get an additional like 10,000 rubles per match. It's not that big of a deal. And the next big thing, and I've been saying this since December, is the matchmaking acceptance and kit selection screens need some kind of repeating and constant prompt system. Like maybe every five seconds is too much, but you still, if you're not picking, something needs to beep at you. There needs to be a sound play. The screen needs to flash. Things need to happen to get people's attention. I've had as many as seven or eight matches, I think, that go to like trying to accept the match and it goes to nine of 10 and then restarts again because the 10th person doesn't accept. And it happens again and again and again for seven or eight times. It took me like six minutes to get into a match that time because not only that, once we got into a match, the 10th person was AFK or something and didn't buy their kit. So we sat there for a minute and a half waiting for him to get automatically assigned. So at that screen as well, when you're picking your kit, as that timer counts down, maybe every 10 seconds after the first 30 seconds, it beeps at you or something. Now, the next one is on the list for BSG's quality of life improvements. Um, they've already got it, at least that's what they told me, but I wanted to bring it up anyways, because some folks think it's a bug or don't understand what's going on. When you get into your match and you're actually picking your class and you're going to buy it, you can look through and see what your teammates are picking. And that's obvious because it blocks you from picking that same kit because you only have one of each one. But if you don't have a preset unlocked, it doesn't show up on your selection screen. So you can't see what your teammates are picking if they're picking a kit you don't have unlocked. For me, this is important. I often pick my kits based on what our team is picking just to balance it out. Like for example, if someone else picks a marksman's kit, I'm not gonna pick a second one because it almost always gimps the team. I just want the screen to look more like the preset tree we see in our menus. Not just so that we could see which kit is even being picked regardless of our own progression, but it lets me see my trees, where I'm at, what I've unlocked, how close am I to the next one? All of that info could affect what kit I wanna pick. But going forward, I'm probably not gonna play a lot of it. I might log in here or there, I might use it for warmups, or if they have a big patch or I get a chance to play in some tournament or something, I'll probably get on that. But to be honest, I would rather just play Tarkov than this right now. I'm still hoping for the better for the game and I do want BSG to be successful with it, but the clock is ticking unfortunately and I can't do anything about that. I honestly don't think the game can survive too much longer without some big changes that make the game more accessible to average players 
as well as buttoning up its performance problems. But that's it. That's my take on Arena. I appreciate you guys watching and hanging out for the whole thing. Hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. I wish you the best of luck in Tarkov. More Arena. And we'll see you out there.